What's up, everyone, and welcome to episode 39 of the MMA Bourbon Appreciation Society. Also, our first show of 2023 because, well, let's face it, we all basically got COVID. Who's that your volume on? I mean, somebody uh, here. That is, would somebody. be Jeremy. No, nope. oh, it's, it's the not audience. me. It's it was not the me. Live audience had it. Yep, I find Hunters. that scary. That's that's. <laughs> Breaking the rules right. of being in the studio. Can't you know, you, have your if you're phone. watching live, do you have to be watching on your phone too? I mean, I yeah, appreciate the user. I do. View, I, I appreciate so. the views. So, speaking of which, we have been getting some pretty good views on our YouTube channel. So, check us out over there at MMA Bourbon Society. But, like I said, this is our first show of 2023. And tonight, we have, we have some fun stuff to talk about. The biggest one, though, that I think that I have seen. In the last couple of months since we, we did, I mean, basically literally all of us got COVID at one point in time or got I've sick. I've avoided or, it, so don't fuck me and jinx me. Well, I mean, we you know, whatever. Hey, did Mama Range tell you you couldn't swear Mama on the Mama Range show isn't watching. And she yelled about Craig, not yet. me. You haven't. I have not said what Craig has been yet. good. And it's because I mean, of Mama Jesus Range. Jesus fucking Christ. Jimmy. And there we go. Okay. All right. The ice is broken. All right. Now that we're back. No, we really have started to see the prices drop, like, big time but on some of the secondary. But they haven't dropped enough. Well, I agree with that. I agree it hasn't, but my God, some of them. It's well, have, the thing that I've noticed now is that the stores aren't catching up with the idea that secondary is dropping. So you're still seeing a ton of the allocated products, especially the Buffalo Trace stuff that hit, you know, over the last couple of months. Yep. That has made it. Oh, shit. And Craig's drunk. That's fine. I'm not drunk. I just. No, not at all. But anyway, so we can't find, we're seeing so many of like, I know at the moment right now where there's about seven bottles of Pappy Van Winkle that nobody wants because well, of the well, price point. Want seven, dollars for well, are you talking Pappy Old Rip? What are you talking? So I'm talking, I know where there's an Old Rip. They probably want 800 bucks for it. Over a thousand. Um, I know where there is a 12 year. How much would you be thinking? Well, 800 secondary, so I want to make it 13. 16. God damn. Yep. And I know where there's a 20. Go ahead. Which is about two, so I'm betting her 26, 27, maybe three. Three grand for a 20 year. Insanity. And we're talking secondary prices. We won't even talk but, the retail but, price of but, 180 bucks for right. a 23. But this is in stores. This isn't the guys right. on the, the, the quote unquote black market sites and things. You know, those are actually dropping because we all understand what the prices are getting to be. So does this bode well for the idea of now finding the products more? Do you think that it becomes the idea that you can, because I have noticed that you can deal with the store owners a little bit. If you buy from them on occasion, you can get the ability to, they'll knock the price down a little bit for you. Oh, yeah. Or, if you the, the, the store. well, the other thing that I've seen lately is that if you buy the bundle, so they're quote unquote bundling bottles. Yes. Where you buy the bottle of one, you get the other. And what they're doing is bundling bottles that aren't moving off the shelves. Yes. Or they'll do, what they'll do is go in and say, oh, we're going to have a store pick of this. That's not something that's going to move And the store, the store pick is terrible. And. I've had a couple you, that were bad. Right. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, had there's a couple, a couple of rebels. stores I will go to. I've had a couple I'm, of rebels that were bad. My question is who's picking it? Well, well that's the whole thing. Exactly. I'm I'm quite happy with the ones that I've picked for stores, but well, yeah, when's Jeremy's our, done. When's okay. our other one coming in? Um, it probably won't Next be month? for another two months. I do think it's going to yeah. be a while though to to get back on topic yeah. with it before they. I don't think they're ever going to completely stabilize, strictly because bourbon's like a commodity now. Yeah, it is. It is, but it's going to come down enough that the market's going to the demand's going to drop enough that the supply is going to overflow it. Yeah, I, I just I mean, I, overflow may not be right, but I don't think it's an overflow because there only is so much product out there, and that's the whole quote unquote allocated. But thing. they're supposed to be right increasing but, their well, yeah, they've increased their numbers, but we're not going to see that for another six to eight years. Yeah. Um, I think though that what this is going to do is it's going to give us the abilities to potentially make some deals, and I think the guys who are the cash buyers who walk in with the blue hundreds. They're the ones who are going to get the products now that they want because the stores, they're not moving. Well, it's not going to cost um, you an arm and a fucking leg no more. Well, and, and well, I, I would be willing. I'm not disagreeing there, but. I would be willing to, you know, I'd be willing to fork out six, $700 like what it used to be for 
uh, a lot B, a 12 year, something like that. It's close to that now. Well, it, it's close on the secondary, but you still can't go to how to network and find things. They walk in the store, you got any Blantons? Well, they're not. You got any? Range. You got any Pappy? You, you got any? It's you, not even you, being you range, rare. I mean, Oh, it's 150 bucks. Oh, okay, great. Let's take it. Yeah. Crazy. So you got enough people that are new to it that don't know. When I hear someone buys a bottle of Blantons for 150 dollars, I just want to smack somebody because they're perpetuating the problem. It's exactly because you can go to Schnucks and get it for 64.99 if you can find it. If you can find it, right. yes. But, but that's the reason people are willing to pay for it. It's a problem. But you can get it on secondary for 100. If it's you true. know how to get into the secondary market. That's true. Well, Again, you're back to the networking. Well, I don't know, but this all makes me need a drink. Jimmy? Am I going to make one? I think tonight... I need a drink, too. You need to make us a drink. All right. We're going to do a John Collins tonight. So take on a Tom Collins. Now, what's a Tom Collins? Tom Collins is gin, and yet I didn't enjoy. Then we're going to go one ounce of lemon juice. Apologies, it's not fresh squeezed. Yeah, why? Yeah. I'm lazy. I would have squeezed it. I know you would have. <laughs> Then we're going to go three quarter ounce. This is kind of like nickel. Oh, here Ooh. we go. <laughs> of simple syrup. Oh, you might... didn't go get more simple syrup. Nope. It's made upstairs, which was made fresh. That's fair. And that one was actually made here too. Then we're going to shake it. Why do we shake it, Jeremy? What's Be the key ingredient? Because it's citrus. If it doesn't, you don't get all those little molecules melting That's together. right. Damn, you would have think you're a whiskey steward there. You would think so. Damn, you want to pass geez. your glass down? <laughs> I was just going to say. Damn it. Craig would like one. You want one? Yeah. I'm All right. I got DD tonight, so. Great. So if you've never seen drunk Craig drunk on this show before, watch out. <laughs> Have you right. never watched the show? <laughs> then we're gonna I've add, only had four or five pours and two drinks now. So. We're going to add two ounces it. of club. We're gonna garnish it with an orange. We're gonna drop in a cherry. It calls for maraschinos, but I'm sorry. If you're gonna do it up. I like my Luxardos. Darn right. Do a quick stir, just mix it back up. And there you go, sir. Cheers. That's Beautiful. Awesome. Jesus Christ. I thought you were that cheering. is a tasty one now. from the John Collins. If you want that recipe, go check out our Twitter, at MMA Bourbon. Check it out on there. We're gonna put that recipe it's up tonight. It's an easy drink. It is. It's Very a great simple. One. And the cool thing is, is that it can be made for everyone around the party. So gin makes a Tom Collins, bourbon makes the John Collins, and tequila makes a Juan Collins. Which, which we I actually, audience member tonight, isn't a bourbon fan, they like tequila. They did the Juan Collins. Worked out real well. And we get a thumbs up Got on that. Got a thumbs so. up on that one. Not because of the person making it, because of the actual flavor profile of the drink. Fair. You better. But, <laughs> no, but it really comes down, like we said, because there are people who don't like bourbon. Right. So my question to you and guys tonight is. We call them fucking communists. We do. Okay. But, no. I'm kidding. I'm if, kidding. If you are going to try to bring somebody into the world of whiskey, and I'm not just saying bourbons. I'm talking any kind of whiskey. What is going to be the product that you are going to try to get them to taste to say, look, here is the nice stepping stone into that. What would it be for you? Craig Nacella. Anything from Jameson, really. Okay. You can get a Jameson line. Um, right now, this is my go-to. Jameson Orange. Really he like Jameson Orange. Track. I'm proud of him. Um, we almost slid up a slip blue I didn't knock nothing over. No, you didn't. I'm proud God of you. God damn. Um, there's a few different, there's quite a few different drinks you can make with this. Um, but if you are in the Dublin area, <laughs> if you're in the Dublin area, go have their old fashioned. It's probably the best thing I've ever had. Um, with the orange? No, it was not orange. It was just it was just, just regular, regular Jameson. Jameson. Okay. And if you definitely if you're in Dublin, call me and send me a bottle of Crested because yes. I will give you money for that. Absolutely. <laughs> I am actually trying. I'm gonna like hit a couple people up and see if I can. Well, uh, I like that idea. Get the a funny thing with Craig for me in a He doesn't weeks. know how to allow for packing and adding extra bottles when he travels when he's going someplace I had like that. Carry on. You did. That, well, I that's my. Had a carry that on. is my. Point of contention with it. I got my bottle. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And I've had enough drinks out of Craig's. I feel pretty good about things. Yeah, so. I mean, all right, Jim Range. So all what right. way are you going? So now are you gonna are you gonna introduce them to the world of rise and you know kind of kick them with the spice? Out no, the I'm not. The gate? I will not go that direction because okay. that chases them away even more. Yeah, you the, suck. I'm just kidding. You had in the all spice and the spice with it and the pepper. They don't get it. But so the bottle I'm going to talk to. 
My wife, who everybody who watches this show regularly knows, cannot stand bourbon. You're that married? is a fair statement. I mean, she does You're not married? like it all. I act like it. Okay. <laughs> so only, only on days in Hawaii. Yeah, we went to Herman one weekend. Herman you would where? think we went for Herman, Herman, Missouri. Where? Okay. It's Tell a wine that country. Is. It's okay. wine country. In, and, um, and you got bourbon in wine country. Here's the best part. It was raining that day. The only lines that weren't really long were distilleries. <laughs> All My right. wife hates bourbon. We spent all day the first day in distilleries. And she happened to try a Blackberry. It's from Blackshire Distillery. Really? It's a Blackberry whiskey. And they served it with lemonade. Let's try that. I've never had that yet. They served it with lemonade. <laughs> I think producer she loved it. Over to get a bottle or so to me, that flavor profile, finding something that takes away that bite and that okay. part. One of her Ready favorites, uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, sell for Jeremy here, uppercut. The well, cinnamon walnut, it's soft. I was going to say, not to be uh, selling the products, but I would absolutely drop down and try the uppercut Shameless whiskey. Shameless plug, by, by the way, guys. Shameless yes. Plug. I plugged it. He started it. I'm fine with it. I'll take it. Um, no, uh, this is one of those that I've had great results from people who have told me that I don't like whiskey, but I like your product because it mixes good, tastes good with soda. Um, the funny one I've heard lately is Dr. Pepper. Oh, wow. Which mm. just floored me. Is that, that Blackberry's good stuff. This is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, oh but I mean, God. I think you nailed the, you like the key this. right there, Jeremy, is what can you mix it with? Right. That you take away that bourbon. Damn, we're out of Glen Karen glasses already? <laughs> <laughs> we're drunks. <laughs> Um, well, I think a couple are upstairs for me drinking in the so office. So I think, though, that, that kind of what this really proves is that it's all about giving something that kind of bites away the flavor mm -hmm. and adding a flavored whiskey to that. And there is a ton of them out there. And I hate to say it, but my new favorite fun one is that damn barbecue whiskey that we bought. <laughs> oh, my God. It, I, I, I about forgot that. about that. I forgot my about God. it. It was so bad I put that out of my mind. Oh, I, I, so, so go back a couple of shows, and I think that I made. Did I make it on the show? Yeah, you made yeah. it old fashioned with it. Because I made an old fashioned that I I did a dry rub rim to, and I'm thinking if I could do candied bacon as the sweet for it, it's going to be flipping amazing. So, um, that that may have to happen for our summer cookout show that will be coming in. How to cook with whiskey? And we're going to do that at my house. That's perfect. Uh, Works for me. I think we got the bigger, better outdoor uh, area here. He's got he's got a gigantic. You got a giant smoker too, though, don't you? No, but I got two and a half acres. Well, that's fair. We could play in the woods. Yeah. We could shoot guns and shit. All right. Guns. You win. All right. Fair. So, so what? Interesting fact right now. Producer Matt left the studio, <laughs> is on the side of the bar. Just drinking. Checking out the bottle and continues to drink it and staring at the bottle to figure out more about Adoringly it. Adoringly at that. I'm so. sorry to his wife. We will have to drive him home tonight. No, he won't. This is really good. The, the right, Blackberry one? It. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? Interesting color. It's got a little bit of the redness to it. Big time. By the way, everybody, it's my wife's birthday today. She's Yay. waiting and she doesn't realize that the camera's facing us the other way. <laughs> <laughs> As she flips me off. So definite post there, uh, marinated beef fajitas with whiskey. Absolutely. Love it. One of my favorites. I did a pork belly the other night with whiskey. It was great. It's, oh, it's, that's delicious. It's a little kick to it at first. That's delicious. It's a little kick to it, but it's got that sweet. All right, Jeremy, this is a very cobbler old fashioned. Oh, oh shit. shit. Okay, now we're just I'm going. Thinking blue, I'm thinking we're going right, right off the rails, yeah. but I think this. So, oh, I've seen that. Yeah, so I So there that is article. a thing that, depending upon what type of store it is that you sell yeah. it at, it's actually not alcohol. whiskey. There's no alcohol in it. Well, there's alcohol in it, but it's a like a neutral grain seltzer. Hmm. So. Yeah, it's there's a whole lawsuit coming to Sazerac with it, and wow. I mean, let's face it, Fireball's terrible. But here's the thing, sue that me, Sazerac. Go ahead. But I, but here's the thing is, I would love to have come up with that formula oh. because of the money they've made off of that. Hundred percent. I'm not gonna. Well, lie. it's what come it, up with it, sell it, walk away. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. It's like aviation I'm, gin. I'm, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying it. I got I get the the banana's gonna be the one. I'm just gonna say the banana's you're gonna not be the gonna one. You're not gonna convince me until I have the banana. All right, yep. fair. Okay. I'm not touching that one. No, not at all. Um, all right. So, we also like to do a little segment here on Katie's the show. Katie's giggling like a schoolboy. 
Just remember, you got a bad hip too, motherfucker. Fair. <laughs> now we uh, we like to uh, we like to do a segment here on the show called "Is It Worth It?" And what this is is that we take bottles out there that could be anything and everything. It could be a very expensive bottle. It could be a very inexpensive bottle. We're gonna move these three to side. But Give me what we're gonna do other. is we are going to take it, we are going to taste it, and we are going to tell you: Do we feel is it worth it for the price point? Now we've taste tested. All five of these bottles ready. These three are for our sip, sip sink save tonight. Those are our, our, our worth it. Yes. That's right. And of course, you know, we will even throw a shout out to the Is It Worth It as a, a sponsor is Craig's new sponsor, the secondhand barrel people who does a yes. lot of work for us. So we <laughs> they appreciate have done that. a ton of work for us. The barrel in my corner yep. came from them. I've so a huge shout out. A bunch of huge stuff done from them. them already, and then they're building me some other stuff. Yeah. Very cool. So I'm All excited. right. So first up, we are going to talk about. Lexington Bourbon Whiskey, the finest Kentucky. It is 43 proof. It is, I understand, I looked this actually up, and it's made by a small distillery in um, Louisville. They are not made by a giant corp. No. So they also don't put out a whole lot of bottles every year, and they don't have a really big distribution. So it's not very high in bottle. I think it's... Retails thirty to forty five bucks. Yeah, it, it was it was like was it even forty five. I, I don't know. Exactly. It was like thirty seven dollars when I looked it up. Of course, yeah. depending on what store you find right. it at. Yeah. But for the price, it was I thought absolutely worth it. it. If anything, it's a very good mixer. It's a lower proof bourbon. Yeah, it, but it tastes very in that very area. easy. It's very smooth. That actually would be a good beginner bourbon for mm -hmm. somebody because it's very. Um, it doesn't have the harsh notes of everything. It's a little sweet. Yeah, a little sweet. Um, very smooth on the end. Not a high proof. You could sit and kind of drink a little bit yep. more of it. Um, I think an ice cube on it would probably mellow it out even more. Um, I liked it. And I would say for the price point that you're at, absolutely it's absolutely. worth that bottle. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, next we are moving on to Withered Oak, made right here in St. Louis, Missouri. And it's a um, rye, Craig's favorite. It is a rye. It is a uh, rye. Distilled by Four Hands Brewery. And I think they call their 1220 Spirits is what they call their distillery end. Um, they make some pretty amazing gin. That's my particular favorite that I they do. What their their uh, Gatorade, what is the... Uh, yes. God, what is that? It's amazing, though. I know so that. they're also very known for their seltzers that they yeah, make. Yeah, that's what it is, the seltzers. Um, <laughs> they're also they've... known for their damn stouts that they <laughs> age in bourbon barrels. And they're fair. Food. They're one of the ranked... And they're with them, and they're incredible. Fair, very fair. I but mean, tonight we are talking about I wear about a skirt. The... I talk about the seltzers. You would. <laughs> no, I'm pointing to you. I, I know you did. <laughs> I can't believe you did that to me. I'm sorry. Uh, a little spoon. But no, the forehand seltzers are pretty amazing. Um, but the gin's even better. And tonight we tried the whiskey. So, Craig, thoughts on the whiskey to start? I'm not a rye person. Fair. Everybody knows that if you watch the show, I, I don't do rye. This rye, though, was actually quite good. It doesn't have the bite of normal rye. It's a more of a citrus taste. Um, the back end doesn't burn as much. The price point, I think, could be just a tad bit high. But being a local St. Right. Louis distillery, I would still support it just 100%. because of who it is. And Four Hands does a lot of great things. Yes. Um, I think with a little bit more time, that will be an amazing bottle of bourbon. <coughs> now, don't get me wrong. It was good now. I liked it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. But I think if they have a few more years, if they could age it just a little bit longer, I think that would be uh, well worth the price point. And I'm, I can't remember exactly what the price point is, but I think it's like... 50 bucks. Okay. Which isn't bad. Which absolutely isn't so bad on a small terrible. batch. No, at all. it's a small batch barrel. Yeah. Or it's a small yeah. batch uh, bourbon. So. The finish is similar to uh, Angel's Envy Rye. Yes. With the port and Caribbean rum barrels, yeah. where Angel's Envy is the port. Um, to me, where I see it being really good, and I'm a rye guy. So I like the spice. Yeah. I like that. <clears throat> The allspice, the pepper flavor that comes with it. Right. It lacks that in my mind. But I think it'd make it very interesting. I actually want to try it. Manhattan. 
Because you Manhattans, know, to me, you make with a rye, you don't make it with a bourbon. With a lower proof rye. 100%. At that, too. And bringing that in, that orange mixed in with a sweet vermouth, I think will be a very interesting profile. Mm. So that's your, your job for Super Bowl this weekend, then. Okay. I'll leave that bottle here. You make us some Manhattans, and we'll come I'll make Manhattans. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. But, I mean, to me, that's where the ability for it to stand out, and that is. I think that it has a great flavor and... That was awesome, Craig. Thank you very much. I'm glad Craig turned his phone off after yeah, he yelled at the audience. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it would that, be an audience member that did that. Anyway. That's the best part. I think that 100% um, being a local distillery, know what it takes to even launch a product. Absolutely. 50 bucks. Is it worth it? 100%. So, all right, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments tonight. On both of these, if you've tried them, let us know. Or mm -hmm. let us know which ones do you want to know what we think. Is it worth it? So, all right. Next up, it is our favorite segment of the week when it should comes to whiskey. I think focus? that we should. So we are going to bring you now our Sip, Sink, and Save that is brought to you by Brad Carey Realty. And we are going to show you Unrivaled. Brad Carey's phone Unrivaled. number. Unrivaled Realty by Brad Carey. That's we, right. Check them out at unrivaledrealty.com. Sorry, guys. Jeremy's been drinking tonight. Anyway. Did you see what you I made? You can believe in the bartender. Did you see what I made? I did. I did. I seen that little... The I blackberry mean, can, with a little can, bit of orange. That's amazing. Here, here's the thing is we can make one of those if we had some simple syrup. 100%. Uh, there's a fresh I, batch upstairs. You want me to go get it? No. Um, this is, again, all brought to you by <laughs> Unrivaled Realty. Check them out. Make, also, know, check yeah. out... <laughs> Check out Brad Carey's Fighting Alliance. That's right, Nemesis, Nemesis Fighting, Fighting Alliance. Alliance that will go down this weekend Ballpark on pay-per-view. Ballpark Village in St. Louis, Missouri, followed by the UFC fights. I'm That's sure the production will be amazing because, you know, I mean, the production is going to definitely be amazing. Be amazing. I mean, well, you got to show up for the cut, man. Every time. And so. producer Matt, who I'm, leads the production. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to, like, wrap a couple hands and leave. Get paid to do that. No, I'm, I mean, it's I'm not touching that one. No. <laughs> but <laughs> tonight, sip, sink, and save. We are going down the road of Joseph Magnus. Now, this Joseph is Joseph Mangala. Them too. Okay. Um, this is newer, I would say, Jim. What do you think? It's been out about three years now. Yeah, yeah, it's been the last three to five years. Yeah. Um, kind of talk. Actually, they got the, a lot of batches of it, so I don't think it's it's probably longer than we expect. But talk us through the ones that we have tonight. So we've got the original plain Joseph Magnus, which is original. It's finished in sherry and cognac casks. You've got the cigar blend. Banana cognac? Now, what does that mean? You get that cigar flavor with it. Okay. A little bit of it. You get a little bit of tobacco. Looks yeah. like there's tobacco in the son of a bitch. And then you've got their latest, Murray Hill, which is released. It just came out. I don't know a lot about that one, but that's on me not for doing sure. my homework. So tonight is the first time I've had this. Um, and it was, uh, all three were pretty good. Um, so this is really, I'm kind of torn on this. I had a tough time with this. I like the Joseph Magnus products. Mm -hmm. I had the standard bourbon a couple of different times. I actually bought a bottle of it and finished it on the way home one night after one of these shows because it was amazing. Um, I wasn't driving. Magnus? I was just a plain Magnus. It was great. Um, so tonight, though, we do have the three. Again, give them the one more time of which was which, and then we will go from there. So you got the plain Joseph Magnus. Yep. You got the Murray Hill, which is the in-between. Okay. Then you got the cigar blend. I do want to throw a shout out to Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Little Jonathan Spicer, great Jonathan guy. Jonathan Spicer, the, uh, great guy. In the He's, Midwestern uh, whiskey community. Whiskey steward at one Olive of local restaurants, Olive and Oak. Yes, he was formerly at... Uh, Clark and Barrel, Bourbon? Yeah, Clark, Clark, Clark and Bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah, so... Was it Clark and Bourbon? Mm -hmm. Okay. I could have, I like, so, no, but I, mean, I, I, he, I think it's something else. He got these three bottles for me and said, hey, I got these. Are you interested? So I jumped because I haven't had all three. Yeah. I love the cigar blend. I well, So the fact that I had the opportunity to bring all three, well, talk to him on the show. Jimmy, then what's your sip, sip sink, save? I was going to say, Jimmy, me? go I mean, ahead. This going on, so that's what... He is into it tonight. Wow. Yeah. Go ahead. So my sip, just because I love it. And it's something I can drink every day. Obviously, you can tell by what's left of it. It's a cigar blend. I just okay. It, I, I love the taste of it, the profile, everything with it. Um, my sink. I'm kind of torn between the original and the Murray Hill. Okay. Um, but I think the 
original is just a little bit flatter. You don't have as much of a flavor profile. So I'm going to save the Murray Hill because I think you can do a little bit more with that with mixing and stuff for people that are at the house and save it for that occasion. Just, and I'm only sipping the cigar blend because I love it. It's one of my favorites. All right. So finally, give it to him. The sip, the sink, and the save. Sip, sink, save. All right. Craig Nicello, jump in. I think we're going to agree on the exact same three. Wow. All right. Because... <laughs> So the two, the the regular and the Murray Hill, they fall a little flat wow. on the back end. Wow. On the back end. Okay. All right. The cigar blend does not. That's a fair statement. It yes. has a very good hot finish. It almost tastes like it's a rye, but it's not. Hmm. Because of the cigar blend or finish. Yeah, the tobacco. I can see that. Okay. With the tobacco, of course. All right. Um. The Murray Hill, I think it'd be a good mixer. And the original, I think the original is young. It needs something. It needs a little extra something to it. I think maybe a couple more years of aging would help. Uh, other than that, I think that, that's about where I'm at with it too. All right. <laughs> and I'm gonna throw out, I love their slogan that they put on top of all the bottles. Yes. Remarkable bourbon or whiskey, remarkable people. Very fair. It ties it all together. All right. I, love get, I love that fact. And don't get don't get it twisted. I th all three were good. Yes. But this is sip, sink, save. So but have one got of them's gone. My, right. You, you got to make a go. call. I mean, you know, and it's hard to it's hard to say that the original is bad. It's not. It's. I mean, you got to the other two because of the original. Right. And Absolutely. You look at it. Right. You, you have to look at the original as it's what started it all. Right. All I right. I mean, some of us have poured a rip down the drain before. I'm that we have. <laughs> I'm not going to say uh, who it was, but I'm pretty sure it was uh, somebody in the middle. I mean, there was that. So, all right, this is going to be one of those nights where we are all in agreement on this one. I am definitely, yeah, absolutely. God damn, are you drunk? <laughs> no, I 100% the, the whiskey store agreed with us. I 100% with us common folk, I know, common common folk. agree with common you. Common folk, sorry, we don't have a whiskey store. No, um, for real though, as you said, the... Uh, the cigar blend has such a subtle sweetness to it that I could see that it pairs because there's just a very light hint of smokiness to it. It almost pulls into what would be like the scent of leather. Um, mm -hmm. Think of like old book kind of thing. Reminds me of a cigarette. Um, reminds me uh, of... A little bit subtler. Little, yeah. Cigarettes are a little too harsh for it, I think. Um, I think that the Magnus... Depends, depends. I think that the, uh, the Murray. Murray is going to be something that could be blended with almost anything because where the proof sits and where the age is on it, even with it having a little bit of a lack on the back end, which I think it does have a little bit of a lack on well, the back end. Well, that's what I'm looking at where we're at. So you're 102 proof here, 103, I'm sorry. See, that's about right. That's 103. Gonna, that, and that one is going to probably be, what? This is 100. Yeah. So you're all very close. And that's so, hot. So, so it's, it's got to be 120. Yeah. So this is closer and to that, a and, and full surprise, proof and barrel proof. And to me, because I, I didn't know the proofs until just now, that's a surprise that I picked that as a sip because I don't like hot work. Right, right. Um, I think the other one is, it, it's a great flavor. It is a very classic flavor. Um, it has a it's lot of, boring, though. It, it has a lot of just sugary. It has a lot of cake spicy kind of to me. It's so, generic. Yeah. Um, we do have a yeah. question in the comments, Jim, and I think probably you are the best one to answer this. This scares me. No, it's actually a pretty legit question. Uh, would you suggest a Maduro cigar to pair with the cigar blend, or what would be your preference to pair with it? Oh, man. That's you're actually the, a good question. Yeah, that's a it's great question. Because you're good one. Really coming out. I do enjoy my cigars. Yeah. You are the cigar guy of the group. I love that we stumped you. I know. With an audience question. That's like a real question. It's a legit question that I think that would go well with it. Yeah. Um, I really do. And A Fuente. Okay. All right. I'll take that. So, all right. But it is, again, it is all brought to our life. sip, sink, and save. <laughs> Asking for a friend. Our no. sip, sink, and save tonight brought to you by Unrivaled Realty. Check them out at unrivaledrealty.com. That's right. Um, big thank you, though, to Brad Carey for always taking care of us here at the MMA Brand Brand Appreciation Saturday, Society. Buddy. And we hope you have a great show for Nemesis coming up. Check them out. What is the website, Matt? It is 
NemesisFightingAlliance.com to I check out the pay-per-view. I think they sold out for the Saturday night. I think it... Uh, if not, it's very, very close. So go to NemesisFightingAlliance.com and check. Absolutely. Okay, so... And if um, Gabe's in St. Louis, we need to meet for drinks and cigars one night. Works for me. Um, Gabriella? All right. Gabriella, yes. I said Gabe. I'm She's sorry. in Texas. That's oh. one of uh, potential sponsor for me. Well, and there we go. Her. She's but no, super I, I nice. totally she, uh, respect the question. She runs uh, custom nutrition for you, so... Definitely give her a shout. We talked the other night. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you. All right. So I'm glad give I gave her the extra follow. push. I yes. do. That's great. Okay, moving on. We are jumping into the world of mixed martial arts. And this weekend, this past weekend, we saw the last emperor have his last fight. I need another drink. And you so, want oh, if we're going to get into Fedor, we got to have another cocktail. All you right. One? No, give me that. Give me that, though. <laughs> oh, Jesus. He's going straight over ice I and orange. Drive tonight, so. Okay, <laughs> so let's get into this though. Fedor Emelianenko made his last walk to the cage in Bellator MMA. He has been called by some the greatest of all time in the heavyweight division. This has had a boatload of talk on social media. So, Craig, you were there, number one. Yes. The experience looked to be incredible. The was, number of, of stars that were in the audience and former legends. It was probably one, one of, if not the fucking coolest fight I've ever worked. Okay. There was so many legends in the crowd. I hung out with Art Jemerson. If anybody knows Art Jemerson, especially if you're from St. Louis, one glove. He fought, Producer Matt got excited. He fought in the first UFC against Hoist Gracie. Yep. And he walked out with one boxing glove. And Art was a good dude. He was fun. He was... Art we is hung a, out and bullshitted and had a good time. Art is a great guy. Yeah. I, I had Art on my old show a bunch of Kevin times. Kevin from Shameless. Even better. I'm not going to sit here and lie. Steve Howie. He was just a little bit uh, starstruck and Craig was. Well, we were, was we super, were getting messages. Dude, he was in Supercross <laughs> the movie. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> I'm, I love motocross and Supercross. Those All are right. Great. So, but my question to you both tonight is Fedor Emelianenko. The greatest heavyweight of all time. Craig Nacello. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. Because um, let's think, let's think <laughs> about this. Just straight out the box, yes, huh? <laughs> let's think about this. <laughs> that took my brother. There out. was a solid there was a solid fifteen years that this man did not get beat. And he fought the who's who. In the heavyweight division at Hand that time. Give me that Blackberry while we're doing this here. <laughs> Who would have thought a flavored whiskey got passed back and forth? I mean, it's pretty goddamn good. But he, he did fight back then. The who's who of, of MMA Crow in, Cop. yeah, I mean, Crow Cop, Mark Hunt. Are going to drink? Um, Orlovsky, uh, God, who else was it? You want to come up and talk with us, man? Come yeah, on, come you're on, trying man. to get input. Come on, dude. Step on the other but side he, for a in change. In pride, he fought the who's who. Okay. He did. Fine. So he fought the who's who. Now in the old days. But here's the thing. Yes. He didn't have the greatest run in Bellator. The man's forty six years old. He's fought for twenty plus years. Exactly. Two thousand two to twenty three. So he's he's twenty twenty plus years. Twenty plus years. He's he's been an MMA fighter. Not a boxer, not some jujitsu guy, an MMA fighter that's fought in the heavyweight division. The hardest division in MMA. Okay. Period. Period. Fine. I don't care what you say. That is the hardest division in MMA. Because those, all those guys have fucking knockout power. They can touch you and put you to sleep. Okay. We've all seen it. <laughs> but. Don't mind me. I'm just making it. It's like having a professional bar, isn't it? It really is, isn't it? I mean, it happens. Okay. So, all right. So, Craig, Self you feel that no matter what. In the heavyweight division, Fedor Emelianenko is the greatest of all time. Yes, I do. Name someone in the heavyweight division that's better than him. God. That, is be that, that was better at him in his prime. Okay, so we're talking in his prime. So GOAT is only in your prime, not your whole career? No, I, I'm, I'm legitimately yeah. asking I mean, that question. Yes and no. I mean, okay, so, okay, so anybody that knows me knows I raced motocross and supercross and all that shit back in the day. The greatest of all time in our in my in that sport is Ricky Carmichael. Yep. He has a hundred and seven legitimate wins in Supercross and Motocross. He went two years in this in Motocross. Oh. Unbeaten. That's twenty-four. No, that's forty-eight motos. 
straight yeah. and never lost a race. Okay, let's put somebody that's the same size as you, if not bigger, across the ring from you and punching you in the fucking head. For 20 years. I mean, he, okay. won 13, and there was he won 13 and won through pride. And then you fought Hong Man Choi, who was 17 foot tall and couldn't fight anybody. But it's not the Fe- point. Fedor was, Fedor was the king of freak show fights. That, that's what pride liked. Pride got, and he got paid to do that, right? Absolutely. I'm not saying he didn't. Hmm. You guys sit here and jerk off Floyd Mayweather all the time. <laughs> wow. And look at all the shit, all the fucking shy side show freaks he fought. But he never lost. I don't care. I don't think in his career there were really, up until the last 10 fights, maybe. Just an FYI, Producer Matt, you were correct. A uh, Black Bear Old Fashioned is amazing. Uh, <sighs> anyway, continue. All right, Jim, what are your thoughts? If you focus on the early career, there's nobody better. If you look overall through the history, he's top three, top five. I Who would push him, him top three. Who beats him? Who beats him in heavyweight? Tell me. Tell me. Who's had the most? Now I'm put who's had spot. that career at heavyweight? Who beats him at heavyweight? At that career. Okay, are we talking at that time or are we talking of History. all time? Yes, Matt, go ahead. Fair. I would say I would say Randy could have done yeah. it. Did Randy have Randy as many was. fights? Doesn't matter. But you have Randy have as many fights. That's not part of the great. I think song. John I Jones asking, could whoop him I mean, tomorrow. Jones. John Jones now and Fedor back. Then. I would have loved Absolutely. to see. John I would have loved to see Vader in his prime and Fedor in his prime. This is like saying who's going to be Tyson in his prime as a boxer. Yeah. Could Fury be Tyson? No. Who knows? Fuck no. No. Not Tyson at all. Tyson would eat him alive. I think Francis Agano beats him. But anyway, all right. Next up the there. Okay, off. so oh, let us know, guys. What do you think in the comments? I, I, I mean, is what, Fedor I mean, the goat? Who who beats him? Who do you think? Who do you think he's the goat? Dude. Do I think Fedor Emelianenko is the goat? No. Do I think Fedor is the goat of the Pride days? Absolutely. Okay. Do I? But and do that's I? Fair. But and that's my fair. thing is, is Fedor should have stopped then, because when Fedor came to Bellator, it was a money grab. And I am okay with that because the man needed to make money. Well, the man deserved to make money. Absolutely, he did. He did. The, but I'm, I mean, but I'm he, saying he's is, a is very, that he's a very nice man. But Absolutely. the problem is, Craig, you're focusing on what he did here I know. and his overall. It, if you take off that first part and I'm look a, at his yeah. ass and, and record. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm a little starstruck because. I know you're working with him. I you're seeing with him. The, I person. see the guy all the time. I no, I know. Him. You know, and he's and he's he's super humble and super but, nice guy, but. You but guys got to understand. Me, dude, I right. would say, though, that if we took Fedor so in his these, prime. So many of these guys get fucked. Oh, absolutely. And don't make any fucking money. Completely. I you get know. why you did it. I'm not saying that. But, but am I saying that Francis Ngannou and Fedor Emelianenko, when they're both in their primes, Zingano is going to kill him because it's a difference Zingano? in heavyweight. You mean Kat Zingano? No. Francis That's Zingano. what you just said. Ngano, he said. Ngano. I yeah. thought you said Zingano. Like, no, yes. Like, Kat Zingano whoop his ass. I'm like, hold on. Anyway, no. But what I'm saying is is that Francis... Ngano. In the, in, what I'm saying is is in their time, it's a it's different, a different class. It's a different sport. It's a different class. But the, okay. sport, the days of so Pride... So you just involved. So all right, here. You just nailed shit. yourself to the cross oh, with I'm it. I'm not saying that. Because you said he's the greatest during Pride... But the sport has evolved. He has not executed when the sport evolved. That fucking guy is 46 years old. But he has not evolved the last. Well, I, Joe Lewis was 137 years old. I'm just saying, <laughs> the guy was 40. I mean, I just turned 47 last Friday. You so, can't even walk. No, barely. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't spell stop either, but whatever. You know, it's fine. I mean, but All the right. guy, the, I mean, God damn it, you guys. Yes. He fucking just don't get it. No, we like, do. I do get it. He, he, he I was, look at the big picture. A to B. I just don't see better. any other I don't see any other fucking heavyweight that has done as much as he has done for the sport. I'm not saying he but that no, I okay, agree so with now that. you're not that's talking different about than the goat. Just, no, it's yeah. not because that's different that's, than the oh. goat. Because it goes both oh. ways. No. He's done a ton the goat of the sport. Is not, plus he's, he's done what for the sport. Uh, the goat is the best fighter of all fucking time. Floyd Mayweather is the GOAT because no, he was the best fighter of all time. No, he's time. not. Manny Pacquiao is. Anyway, 
Not uh-huh. in the least. Not in the I least. I love Pat. Now you're talking about, is Bob Barton channeling through you? <laughs> Bob, I love you to death, but come on. All right. <laughs> I'm just sucking shit up. Moving <laughs> along. That's the first name I <laughs> Moving along. And I do agree with everybody in the comments who says that it is hard, but I agree that beating no, John it, Jones or anybody. Fuck John Jones. We're moving on. Co- is, Next what, what, up. Are we going with cocaine got John Jones or sober John Jones? Look, or if John Jones can again. beat oh, Daniel Cormier or, while on coke and not trained, he'd whoop Fader tomorrow. A, or HGH John Jones. John Jones, sorry. Coked up John beats Fedor. Fedor. Well, yes, fuck, yes, in the comments, this did escalate quickly. <laughs> All and right. Walk through everything. Next oh. up. Thank you very much, Craig. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on. Big Thank you guys. For- <laughs> <laughs> that shit that really went south. Oh, right? it really did. Okay, no. Now, I there was another amazing this. fight that happened, though, at Bellator on this one. And this is what I would call the future of the sport. Fucking, who's going to beat this kid? Well, we Who ta- can beat this kid? We are talking about Johnny Eblen, Bellator yes. middleweight champion, defended the title, and looked amazing. Um. Craig, take me through what his corner was like. It was fun. I get that no. part. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, literally, I'm sitting in the corner with with King Mo, uh, Mike Brown, Mike Brown, Dustin Poirier, and uh, Tiago uh, Alves. 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 And then I had that's to go, okay, Craig. We'll help then, you all of them. God damn it, I'm drunk. Okay, leave me alone. He's sure. He's uh, yeah, really. a little buzz. But then I had to go work on Johnny all like every round yeah. almost because his eye was starting to swell up. Uh, I have been working with Johnny as his cut man for a while now, and this kid gets better and better and better with every freaking fight he goes out and does. How about the German suplex at the end? Oh, it was, it was icing on the cake. I, I, I it put a smile on my face because, like, the first round I was a little worried just because I know Tokov is such a tough Russian, and he comes from Fedor's gym. Yeah. He's a Fedor camp guy, and those guys aren't sissies. Those guys no. aren't pussies. They're gonna come fight, and I, and Johnny is. He's the human cheat code, as his nickname says. That dude can go from boxing, to Muay Thai, to wrestling, to and jujitsu in about two seconds. And I mean, as somebody he's, who's he's who so just, well-rounded, yeah, yeah, who really hasn't been in the game. No, that, he's thirteen and zero now. Because I mean, really, we were working with him in Kansas old. City. I know I was calling his fights when it was like. Two and three yeah. fights, you yeah. know, yeah. It, crazy. And, so who and do you so th- humble, but a hundred percent, just a hardworking kid. Uh, I don't think. I think, I think he's got a long reign ahead of him. His reign ahead of him is very, very is it could be very, very long. Um, if he keeps the 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 train rolling like he is with King Mo in his corner, and Mike Brown in his corner, like he's got mm-hmm. two of the very best at strategizing and calling fights. Uh, those guys watching those guys are listening to those guys coach is amazing. And then you got, uh, and then uh, again, you got Dustin Poirier in there and Tiago Alves there in there. Those guys are amazing at it too. Yep. Yep. I mean, you just sit there and listen to them and, the, and they see everything. And, yeah. And that's the one thing about if I can give any advice to anybody that's coach, that's a coach and you have two or three corners in your corner, one guy needs to speak when yelling out instructions like don't get don't don't stammer over each other don't yell and scream over each other because that just fucks the fighter up. Yeah. Like they had one guy for wrestling, one guy for striking, and one guy for you know certain things. But if if that one person started speaking, they all got on the same level and started saying the same shit, the exact same thing to that person to Johnny. So he you know just in case someone's voice isn't going, they can't mm-hmm. hear. You know that. It's a lot of people going on. There's a lot of noise in there. Yeah. Um, well, who beats I, I don't see. I don't see anybody at the moment. I, I. So I think he said the next fight or the the next uh, challenge could be either whoever wins out of Fabian Edwards and Musasi in May. That's in, in Paris. Paris. Right? Yes. Okay. Um, personally, I don't see Fabian Edwards beating Musasi, but. I've seen Musasi, like Gegard is, I mean, he's a veteran. He's been fighting, he's, what's, what's he got? Over 50 fights? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I could see him and Johnny going back 
doing a run back for the title again because I mean Johnny, Johnny shut him out. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple, he shut him out. <coughs> He went in there well, and, and, and put a whooping on I mean, on Gegard. Do I think that, I think right now in Bellator, I think that is the only person that could give him a run for his money for the belt. Um, personally, uh, I don't know if Fabian Edwards, I've only seen him fight a couple times on TV. Um, but at 185, I think Gegar Musasi is the only one that could actually give him a chance. Or I, give him, I, I, give him I, a struggle. I agree. And I but, think that's the fight that needs to happen. But so. I think if that fight happens again, I think it's going to be the same old, same old. You've got old lion versus young lion, and young lion is hungrier. And, and very he's, he's very well skilled. The very only way true. somebody's going to beat him, in my mind, they got to catch him in the first round. Absolutely. Because... Nothing negative saying this, but he's right. slower coming out of the gate. Well, he's a slow he, starter. He's very slow starter. He takes, I mean, he took a ton of jabs the other night throughout the fight, but the first round, I mean, he was 50-45 on, on two cards, 49-46 on the but other, But after right? that first round, you see what happened, But after right? the first round, he controls it. Yeah. So whoever can beat him has to be quick out of the I, gate. I'm telling you right him. now, I'm Agreed. seeing Johnny Evelyn all the way because, one, the kid is – one of the most humble people pers- people I've ever met, and he's fucking solidly yeah. probably one of the best middleweights in the world right now, if not the best middleweight right now in the world. And that's going between us and UFC. I, agree. I really think it's, so. It'll be an interesting one to see how it plays I think out. He, I think he can go <laughs> from wrestling to, to boxing and all that. I think he's more athletic than most of the UFC roster. Well... And his striking game has improved oh, the last God, couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. We've all we've talked about that numerous times Absolutely. on the show. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of the UFC, the UFC is making its way back to the Midwest and coming to Kansas City, Missouri here, coming up April 15th. And uh, I believe Max Holloway will be on that fight. So um, I've, when is it? I've heard that they're uh, April 15th. I have heard that there are going to be at least a, a couple of local Missourians. Jake Collier is going to be on it. The card, um, Dustin Jacoby will be on the card. What about Andrew Sanchez? He's a Missouri um, I have not heard Andrew Sanchez, and I, I haven't heard, heard his Zach name Cummings. in a while. Well, how about Joaquin Phoenix? Or a Joaquin, Joaquin Buckley. Buckley. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, Phoenix. <laughs> I think if Joaquin Phoenix was on the card, that would be amazing. I would that would absolutely go. That would that. be like CM Punk fighting because he's terrible. <laughs> hey, I did go to that something. fight. I went to that fight. I'm sorry, um, but anyway, no. It, so, looking forward to that card. Why do you think that being being the show being from St. Louis, we have had a UFC here in St. Louis. Why have we not had a major card come back here yet? Ticket sales weren't there. They did it on a, what was it, a Sunday or Monday or something like that? It was a Sunday, Sunday night. night. Um, it was like a three-day weekend. Um, I don't think the ticket sales were there, one. And then two, I mean, everybody's still just open. I mean, I hate saying this, and this is beating a fucking dead dog, but everybody's just now still open, still opening up from COVID, honestly. And then with the UFC, they're making so much money doing shows just at the Apex. It's retarded. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, because that's I mean, fair. they can do they can broadcast from there. They can do everything from the apex. Like the apex is their mecca. I mean, and, and I get it. I, I mean, the company's worth a lot of money. They've spent a lot of money to to put the pi in and the, and the apex. And why not do your shows from there? I mean, why not? I mean, how many shows did they do from there during COVID? Like twenty? Oh, absolutely. You know. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I think that we may uh, we may get the press passes and head up that way. So, oh, um, we're going. We're going. All right. I cool. think we're I think going. We have to go. Um, I got go to go to Hawaii the following week, though. My next one, Damn. and I find this one funny. So there has been now talk since Francis Ngannou has left the UFC. Mm-hmm. Tyson Fury said, "Hey, here's the rules. What do you think of it?" And Francis agreed. We're talking small gloves, so we're going four ounce gloves. In a cage. Queensberry <coughs> rules, right? Yes. Yes. So basically modified boxing. Fair enough. Dirty boxing uh, with clinching and what else was that? It, it's basically it's no kicks, but you can clinch. Okay. And there's no takedowns. What do you think? Number Listen. one, Jimmy, does it happen? God damn. I hope the hell it does. <laughs> I, said, I swear to God, I hope the hell it does. And I don't care what it costs, I will be there. I will, I will be there to watch that fight if I'm it happens. I'm not a huge boxing fan, and I'm coming to your house because you're buying it. 
Oh, no, I'm not Whatever. buying it here. I'm going to the freaking fight. I don't care what it costs. <laughs> I'm not. That fight to me intrigues the hell out of me. I'm not going there. You got two of the greatest oh, strikers from both sides. And the fact of Fury stepping down to four ounce gloves. Me and Jeremy, I think somebody's going to die. At home. I mean, somebody can die in that fight unless Nganu can really tie him up. I mean, Nganu, if you need a cut, man, I mean, I'm. Might be available. Selfless plug. I love a good freak show fight. I'm all about it. Wait, so. I mean, but it's no. not a freak show fight. It's not. It's not it kind of is. No, it's, it's kind not. of. It kind of is a freak show but fight. But it's legitimate we're crossover. Taking, we're, but we're taking modified rules from each sport. Maybe that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Hey, Maybe I that love needs the, to happen. I love the Muay Thai fights where they do them in, oh, in, in MMA gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah in, in one. one? Oh, that's God, yeah. amazing. We're talking about that, I can't wait for that show. So I hope I get. But no. But. Fury takes it. I feel sorry for anybody to actually get struck by Fury. Yeah, but here's four the problem, though. Here's the problem. You think Fury's going to take that. But if if he, if Zingano, t- or in God, God damn, you got me talking. Uh, me, Zingano. you Cass did Zingano. it. Cass Zingano. Cass <laughs> no. If, if, if he touches him, he could kill him. Like, dude, like, I'm Fury. Sure Matt, who wins it? Tyson Fury, thumbs up. And get Francis and Ganu thumbs down, thumbs up. Oh, we're going. Oh, wow, Ganu wins it. I, All see, right. I'm thinking Francis too. And dude, I I love the Gypsy King. Don't get me wrong. I think he's amazing. I, it's the only heavyweight fighter I know at this point. And I like Fair. watching. And I like watching him fight though. But I think if you put him in four ounce gloves, he's got that much more power. He yeah, he so annihilates Usyk and Joshua. In regular boxing gloves. What's he going to do with four ounce? He might as well be bare knuckle. I say, fuck it, let's be bare knuckle. No, I got a better idea. And this is my oh one for God. the evening. Here we go. Slap box. This is, my, this is my one gotcha for the evening that producer Matt kind of ruined today. But. We knew it. Slap fighting has become the next big thing. First thing, JT Tilly. Absolutely. brother. I hope you made back. Yes, I do too, buddy. I hope you got the paycheck for selling that off. Um, from what I understand, he's actually involved. Well, it's even better. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so hey, good I for him. absolutely, you know, if you can take it from being a singer in the platters to doing slap fighting, I think that's amazing. So, um, yes, JT used to sing in the platters. I know. I yeah, I freaking amazing. No, JT for years. Yeah. yeah I know. Um, the thing that I love though is that is it a sport? Is it a spectacle? And is it dangerous? Do you want my honest opinion? I wouldn't ask the question if I didn't. Well, I'm going to go before Craig. To me, it's a circus <laughs> freak show. Really? Really? Dude. See, I think it, I, my, my thought is if you can bet on it, it's a fucking sport. But but you can bet on anything. Well, I'm just ex- Except James Krause fights. <clears throat> oh, God. Anyway. Man. No, but well, honestly, that though. one. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, you there. look at the people's reactions. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I continue. had nothing to say with that or do with that. <laughs> Just know that. Oh, it I was feel funny shit. I said that. Anyway, continue. No, you don't. I can't top that. Fair, but Craig, um, your thoughts on um, what? Slap boxing, slap fighting. Sport, is it a sport, spectacle, or is you know, it dangerous? honestly, I've never even fucking seen it or watched it. So, but here's the thing. JT was a friend. I did a lot of work with JT back in the day. I'm happy for him if he sold it off or whatever Marlene said he did. But is it a sport? No. Is it a spectacle? Fuck yeah. Kira calls it a sporticle. <laughs> hey, producer DJ K pop says it's a sporticle. I'm going with that. I kinda like that I, one. So I, I, like I kinda it. like that. Yeah. Um I, I I think that the idea of it changed a little bit when it it's went fun, to the UFC. But it's fun. Okay, but if you watch what Slap Fight was, which is what JT does. Right. It's not the wind up. Like these guys are basically throwing open-handed left and right hooks. Yeah. Telling what Slap punch fight. or what swing they're gonna yeah, throw exactly. on so you know to j- right. Whereas in the original Slap Fight that JT was doing, it was more of they were actually slapping with like their fingers. And I thought that that was pretty cool. That was different. Um. Okay. He and I talk about it off on, on occasion. I, I think it's pretty cool. Do I think it lasts? I do. I think that it has enough mm-hmm. follow because it's coming out of AEW on mm-hmm. TBS. So it's coming out of pro wrestling. Oh, they're getting a huge following then. Well, and they're keeping the numbers, which is nobody has been able to do. And I give him so much credit for that. So uh, 
Big I mean, to if a that. motherfucker just wants to get smacked in the face, I mean, they're not getting they're not getting paid really. But they're getting they're getting, be- they're getting paid two to four better. grand. They're getting paid better than most MMA guys when they start. I mean, these guys are getting two to four they're grand. They're getting two thousand and two thousand. Oh well, fuck. Hook side. <laughs> Come here, bitch. Let's go. I'll get on that side of the bar. You can give me fucking two grand. I, mean, I might take a smack in the face. Jeremy is. I'm oh, not. God. But anyway, let us know what you think in the comments of slap fighting. Is it a sport? Is it a spectacle? It's really or not is a it sport. dangerous? It's a fucking spectacle, but it's kind of cool. I mean. All right. I got I'm one sorry. more. I got one rolled, more before we wrap up. The knocked out rolling forward was fucking hilarious. I didn't see that. Oh, it was oh my crazy. God. She got she started to stand up and did a forward somersault. She was on. so fucked up. Dude, how about did you guys see Lorenz Larkin fucking the like completely destroy a dude with an elbow the other night? No. On Bellator? Yeah. No. He hit him with a fucking elbow from the clinch, and this guy goes and just falls face first. I can't remember the guy's name, but Lorenz Larkin like starched this dude. Anyway, let anyway, us know sorry. what you think on our in the comments of this one on our YouTube page at MMA Bourbon Society. Um, all right, I got one more. I got one more. Here we go. I got one more. What bad is a Jake fucking Paul? Question? Nope. No. It has nothing to do with Jake Paul tonight. Surprise. Paul part. Paul, the brother, Logan partnering oh, with. Oh yeah, Prime. Dana. Yeah. That's yeah. not even mine. Oh wow. Okay. What do y'all think of the return of Conor McGregor? And mm-hmm. the fact that he was told <coughs> if he wins this fight, it's an automatic title shot. I got to see him pass the Who's fist he test. He's going to fight Chandler. He's going to fight Michael tough. Chandler. Him and Chandler yeah, are coaches Chandler and tough. Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor and are, are now fight. the coaches are, we gonna, are tough. Are we going to test? Are we going to direct test both? <laughs> I'm just asking. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, just let us just, just let us know what you think in the comments. Are you ready to see Conor McGregor take on Michael Chandler in the world of the ultimate fighter? We may have some pretty cool stuff to come up oh with that one, God. too. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a great no night. Thank you. Follow us on all of our socials here at the MMA Bourbon Appreciation Society, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, everybody. I have no drink. That's your own fault.